Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to create this flashy loading animation with the glass look and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do, please don't forget to leave that like and if you're new around here and want to learn more, hit that subscribe. Now let's jump into Blender and first of all, I will just select the light and the cube here, press X and choose the lead and we can reset the camera. So select the camera, press Alt G and Alt R to reset the location and position and now I'll press R, then X and 90 to rotate 90 degrees and confirm with enter and press G then Y and move it a little bit back. Here will be our scene and we want this camera view right there. And now let's press shift A and we'll start with an empty plane axis and you will see why just in a second. And now let's press shift A and we'll add mesh and a plane. Now tap into the edit mode and let's press S to scale this down a little bit. And now just press R then X and 90 to rotate 90 degrees like this and then press S then Z and scale it up on the axis so it's like a card maybe something like this now press ctrl shift B to create bevels and increase number of cuts with the mouse wheel to create something nice and smooth like this and now let's press A and E to extrude and we can enable face orientation here and as you can see this turned red so we need to select everything and press shift N to recalculate the normals this is the new feature in blender 4.4 where if your normals are correct it won't turn up blue anymore it will just be uh, you know regular gray and you only get red warning when your normals are incorrect so great stuff here now let's step out and let's go to the modifiers panel and let's add some bevel and increase number of segments to let's say three and reduce the amount tiny bit like this. Now right click shade smooth and enable harden normals. So we get this nice flat shaded area. And now press G then Z and move this up somewhere here. And hold shift, select the empty, press Ctrl P and parent to object. So now if we rotate the empty, this will move as well. And now I will select this camera, press G then Y and move it back. And let's hit zero on an ampad to look from the camera and you can see this is our view so let's go to the output settings and modify this to something like 1200 to 1200 i want the square and let's press g then y with the camera selected to go a little bit further even like this if you're just starting blender and you have trouble following all the tutorials make sure to check out my courses as well where in addition to the step-by-step -step instructions you also get full in-depth explanation of all the tools and all the steps and you get to learn everything from simple opal design all the way to full character illustration textured environments a little bit of sculpting hard surface modeling so if you're interested please check out the link in the description so now we'll be animating the rotation of this using the empty and we can always just go ahead and change this so this will kind of determine the diameter of the loading wheel so let's select the empty let's press n to enable side panel and here we'll right click the y rotation and insert single keyframe and now let's move to somewhere like frame 50 and let's hit minus 360 right click and insert single keyframe so this is what our animation will do now it's a little bit choppy so in the output settings make sure you switch this to 30 fps and now it will be much more dynamic but i want even more dynamics there i want it to be snappy i really want this to accelerate as it goes um down here so let's hit Control and tab here in the animation view that will show us the graph editor and using the middle mouse button we can hold control and zoom in or out on our animation so we can focus on what we have here and now i want this animation transition to be really steep so we can just select and drag this handle and do the same for this one so we get this really steep animation graph so it kind of takes some time to spool up but then it kind of quickly goes through the apex like this and then additionally what I want to do is to go to the modifiers and let's add cycles modifier and you will see this can repeat your animation but um, before mode we can repeat with offset so it won't reset every time but it will continue where it end up and let's do the same thing here so this is what we have and now it will repeatedly do this of course you could just reduce the frames and render out the loop which will do eventually um, but i want these others uh, to have kind of an offset and this will be very important part of the whole thing so don't forget to do this cycles modifier with the offset and now what we can do is to add some rotation 
um, to this part as well. So let's go and right click Z rotation here and insert single keyframe and around frame, let's say 30 or 35. I want this to be completely rotated. So let's do minus and I want to do 180 right here. We don't need 360 because this is a flat object. So this will look just fine um, with the 180 rotation. So right click and insert single keyframe. And now I want to make this steep as well. So let's do something like this here. If you want, you can zoom in a little bit on it so you can see what's happened. And now this rotation will happen. But now the origin point might be a little bit off. If you look from the top by pressing seven on a numpad, you can see it's on the original plane and I want to have it in the middle. So we can just right click and set origin to geometry and it will place it dead center in your geometry. So you can now reset the Y position of this to zero and you will get something like this. And now it will perfectly rotate around the middle and you won't see a difference between zero and 180 rotation. Okay, now let's go back to the camera view by pressing zero on an numpad and let's create more of these. So I'll just select these two, press Alt D then Y and move it right about here. And now press shift R a few times. Let's say, let's create the six, let's create seven of those. So now if you play back the animation, they all do the same thing. And now I want to decouple the animation. I want to keep them as linked duplicates as an objects, but I want to decouple the animation. So you can just select all of these objects, the empties, or you can select them right here by holding shift and then go object relations, make single user. And I want to make single user for the object animation. So now the animation is no longer linked. So I can just go here, press A and G, then X and five frames. So I shifted this animation five frames. And you can see this is now slower than the others or rather not slower, but it's offset. So I will do the same thing for all of these. So for the next one, I will press G then X and 10. So I'll offset 10 frames here. I'll do 15 here. We'll do 20, 25. And of course, um, a lot of things like this can be done with geometry nodes. Um, no arguing there, but, um, this is quite easy and fast way how to do something like this for a simple animation. So finally we have all the offsets in place. And if you now play back the animation, this is the rotation we have. I really like this and I want to offset the rotation for these cards as well because they are rotating at once and they might intersect here and there. So let's select all of these. And again, we'll go object relations and make single user for the object animation. And now for the first one, let's go back. Um, the first one is okay and for the second one and I'll offset them just like two frames or something like that So press G then X and two And here let's do four Six That will be eight Ten and finally twelve Okay, so you can see now they're rotating in a sequence and they're not no longer. And here we have some intersection happening, but we could also, you know, make um, the distance between them a little bit longer. So you can just select all of these and hit period on a keyboard and choose only locations. That's the same thing you can enable right here to affect only locations. And now let's switch the pivot point to 3D cursor. So the 3D cursor is here and we can press S then Y and just scale this up and down and it will increase our distances. So let's see how this works. Okay, that's probably not even visible when we render this out. So let's look from the camera. Okay, and this is what we have here. Nice loading animation and repeatable. Now, if you don't want to render out the whole loop, which is probably not looping anyway, because if we go here, you can see the reset is quite visible. We can go ahead and reduce the number of frames. So let's reduce the end frames to something like 50. 
and now this should loop perfectly and the way this works is since we enabled that cycles with offset if you're on the frame one the back cards are already rotated based on these offset animations right here so this will be the perfect loop um i think to have it really perfect um i think we need to go frame 49 here and now this will loop perfectly okay the next thing i want to do is to set up a um, few materials and a little bit of a lighting so let's select the card create a new material there and first of all i want the glass look so let's press ctrl b limit the preview only to camera bounds and i'll go and in the render settings enable cycles gpu enable the noising and gpu for the render the noising and i think 64 samples for the animation preview will be okay on render time and now let's press shift a and let's add some light so we can see what's happening here press g then z move this up and let's make this larger and of course stronger something like 500 and let's go back to the camera view and preview the rendered view and yeah i think this will be fine so let's select the card and let's increase the transmission weight to something like this and reduce the roughness this is the look i want it to have maybe a little bit more transmission so it's really translucent and now the next thing i want to do is to you know give them different colors but these are still link duplicates so if i move one of them in edit mode every one of these moves and they will share the material but we can assign different colors to them so let's press shift a and let's search for object and insert object info node and now let's drag a location and let's do separate xyz um so this way we can separate between x y and z location data and now if you connect the x to the surface here you will see the representation of these values and on the y axis this is what we are interested for because they are you know sequenced on the y axis so the further down you go on the y axis you will get a different value there but we'll need to map this so let's do map range and now if you look from the side you can see this is on the zero and this sits around six so we can go from zero to six and it will distribute from zero to one so now you should have black here and white there so we can now apply this on a ramp so let's create a new one ramp color ramp and let's plug this here and we can increase number of colors here to seven and let's click here and distribute stops evenly so we want two three four five six seven segments which is great and let's switch the linear to constant and now you can see we have different shades of gray here and we can just change them to whatever color we want so um let's do like the full color wheel so let's do something like right here here we'll go purple then violet of course okay so now we assign different color to each of these cards and we can just plug this into the base color here and plug this back into the surface and if you don't like these colors don't worry about it um, it will be too tedious to just go in and edit these colors so we can just plug in the hue saturation node plug this into color and we can for example reduce the saturation to something like 0.5 if you want it more subtle play with the value or do the color shift if you want so yeah something like this should be fine and then of course if you don't like some of these colors you can make the subtle changes up and down the color wheel okay let's look from the front now let's select the light and i will disable the only location here switch this back to medium point and press r then x and rotate this a little bit and move it back i think we can go all the way up to 1500 to give this more light and more reflections and let's do a little background so let's press shift a let's add a plane 
Now let's press R, then X and 90. Press G, then Y, and place it back here and make it larger. And now we can tap in, and press Ctrl Shift B again to enable the bevel and press A and E to extrude. And you can see now if I go back, it will flip the normals. If I go towards the front, it will make them correct. So if I go back, I can just press A and Shift N and all is great. Now I will shift click the card and just transfer the bevel modifier, copy to select it, make this smaller probably. Let's look from the front and yeah, let's do it like an icon or something. And then we can press Shift A, add the background same way move this back and just make it large and let's give this some color so create the material and i think something like violet will be fine and for this one let's add some transmission and reduce the roughness so we have like a glass behind and now let's press shift a and let's add a light move it back here and increase the strength and the radius a little bit so we have some backlight back there Okay, if you don't want to see that light there, you can hold Ctrl, click, select the light so it's active and press Ctrl L and link receivers to emitter and choose exclude and that will exclude the light from affecting this object. So yeah, now I really like this, but it's a little bit too subtle, too dark. So let's increase the lighting quite a lot. I think something like 3K here should be fine. Okay, maybe even 10K depending on the size of your scene, of course. And then finally, you can go to the render settings, color management, and increase the contrast quite a lot and exposure if you think this is too dark still. So yeah, something like this. And of course, then you can play with adding more lights or adding HDRI, or you can go ahead and color the background a little bit so you get a little bit more ambience to blend the colors a little bit together and then play around with the background color and brightness whatever you think will work um, the best and finally in the output settings just go and choose ffmpeg video with mp4 encoding choose your folder here go render render animation wait out your frames and your animation will be ready so that's a quick um, cool glassy looking loader tutorial for today. I really hope you enjoyed this one And again, if you did, please leave that like and if you want to see more like this hit that subscribe Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day